Should we get started with our bios, folks? Okay, I guess I will go first since I am not muted right now. My name is Lauren, and I'm currently a senior at Amherst College. I use she or pronouns, and on campus, I'm an American Studies and Law, Jurisprudence, and Social Thought double major. I'm also pursuing the five college certificate in reproductive health rights and justice. And on campus, I'm involved with a few different things. I worked with residential life as a community advisor. I'm a member of our varsity track and field team, a part of our athlete of color affinity group, and I'm an education professions fellow. So nice to meet you all. If anyone has questions about any of that, feel free to mention it later on and I will pass it to Cece. Hi everyone, um, I'm CC. I am a junior, so class of 2022. Um, I am a chemistry and music double major. Um, I saw someone was interested in music, so I get really excited when I see that. Um, and I'm also pre-med. Um, there aren't a lot of hard STEM kids here, so, but if you guys have any questions, um, that's me. Um, on campus, I'm primarily involved with the Amherst College Emergen Emergency Medical Services. We're a completely student-run EMT group that provides 24-7 coverage, oh my goodness, um, medical care on campus. Um, so I'm the current president. Um, additionally, I do some quantum mechanics research. Um, I'm pursuing on writing a senior thesis. Um, I'm also a flute player. I play in the orchestra. Um, and I'm in some chamber groups as well. I'm involved in religious and spiritual life. Um, and yeah, I'm also part of the Asian Students Association, which is um, Asian Identifying Affinity Group. Go. Yeah, um, I'm Soleil. I'm a junior, so also class of 2022. I'm a math and sociology major. Um, I'm also involved in the Education Professions Fellowship. Also, shout out if anyone's interested in education, it will be a major in the upcoming fall. But um, besides that, I'm part of the Multicultural Student Union on campus, as well as Yearbook and our Anime Club. I'll pass it back to Lauren. Yeah, so again, we're going to give you a quick overview of the five college consortium, tell you a bit about how it makes Amherst distinct from a lot of other liberal arts colleges. And if you have any questions about the five college consortium or about our experiences with our majors or the town of Amherst or extracurriculars, feel free to just write it down in the chat and I will pass it to Cece for our overview of the five colleges. Um, this might be an unfair question, but in case some of you guys have been to our information sessions before, does anyone know the names of the other colleges within our consortium? It's totally fine if you don't. Oh, cool. Great. I see some nods. Um, can you type them in the chat and we can, we can get into it? Great. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, thank you, Thomas. Um, UMass. So UMass is um, the flagship. UMass Amherst is a flagship UMass school. Um, it's around a 10-minute walk maybe from Amherst campus um, and has a, a really, really large, diverse, um, I guess, a large assortment of departments. So a lot of students who are interested in foreign languages end up taking classes there, um, as well as they just have a lot of interesting courses with some really cool professors. Um, UMass is a really large state school, um, so classes are definitely way larger than Amherst College because they have like maybe like a hundred times the amount of students that we have. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but um, my, for example, we'll talk about this later. My, um, the class that I took at, Am at, at UMass Amherst had 560 students in it, and a normal STEM class that I would have taken had maybe 90 um, maximum. But so there, there's like that size difference, but UMass is also known for their number one dining hall in the entire United States. Um, very delicious dining hall food. I've eaten at every single place. Um, and as um, Amherst College students, we have the ability to like, you know, use their dining facilities. We have to pay for it. But um, if you take a class there and it coincides with mealtimes, you can actually get um, access to user dining halls um, as well as other facilities as well. Um, I see some new, yes. Wow, Thomas, look at you. You're, you're like, you're like, what, at, at, like, 
you got it. So um, Smith is another one. Smith is one of the all uh, the women's colleges that are affiliated with the consortium. Um, it's also a liberal arts college that has a graduate school attached to it as well. Um, a lot of my friends that actually study at Smith um, are like doing like math and engineering and things like that, and they have a lot of those programs available, um, which is really really nice. They are located maybe a twenty five minute drive. From Central Amherst Town, you can get there using the bus system, which is completely free for all five college consortium students. Um, and you can get there and use, you know, like there's a really wonderful town called Northampton that they're in, that they're in. Um, you know, I go there to study and, and drink their coffee, and I, you know, take up the spaces and steal them from Smith students. Um, you can also go to their botanical gardens, which is really really nice in the springtime. Um, and like I said before, same with Smith, UMass. Um, Hampshire and Mount Holyoke, which is the last one, spoiler alert, um, we have access to all these buildings, or, or all like the facilities in the buildings, ooh, sorry, um, if we take a class there. Um, and same with town, you can go to their town and chill out. Um, the next school that we'll move on to is Hampshire. Um, Hampshire is a bit of an avant-garde school. I'm going to be honest, I know I don't know too much about Hampshire, but I do know a lot of my friends have taken classes at Hampshire that are really, really unique. Um, and something that I do um, think that Hampshire is known for are their really unique classes and they're very um, interesting grading um, or grading, what, like, like what, what is it called, like method, I guess. Um, so I know that my friends that, are, that have taken classes at Hampshire have had really great experiences there. Um, and they have really fun events as well. Um, and the last school is Mount Holyoke. It's another all women's college um, that is located in Holyoke, um, which is the farthest away from central Amherst town, maybe like a 40, 40 minute drive, maybe. Um, and it's it's this is it's a very small town. I would say it's a little smaller than Amherst, um, a little bit more out of the way, but it's really really beautiful. Um, they are also really strong in their education departments as well, um, and I know that that faculty is super super tight knit. Um, yeah, that's basically all the stats that I know about the five college consortium. Um, just in general, for Amherst College students, we're able to cross register in any of these five colleges. Um, any, any of these five colleges to take a class if the class is not offered um, at Amherst or if there's a scheduling conflict there can be adjustments made um, so these you know like these colleges are available to you and the courses are available to you if you're interested in um, reaching out to a professor or taking a professor at any one of these schools you have the ability to do so um, and it's not just for like education or academic reasons either you can also go to these college uh, campuses or colleges just to, you know, be social and meet new people. So that's my logistics spiel. <laughs> yeah, so like Cece said, one of the biggest benefits of the five college consortium is the fact that Amherst College students can take classes at these other colleges and five college students can take classes at Amherst. So a lot of times in the classes you're taking, you might meet someone, make a friend from Smith or Hampshire or UMass, and they'll invite you to their dining hall, they'll invite you to an event going on. So it's really great for that social element. And also it's great for scheduling conflicts and being able to take classes at other institutions. So in a usual semester, Amherst College students take four classes and you can take half of those classes at another college. And students do that for a number of different reasons. I took an astronomy class at UMass Amherst my sophomore year because I just wanted to get away from Amherst's campus. I'm not a STEM person and I just thought if I'm going to throw myself into the STEM deep end, I might as well do it at another institution, which was really fun. I also had an experience when I was a junior the fall semester, I was studying abroad in London. And when I came back from London, I was like, okay, I've always wanted to learn Mandarin. This is the semester when I'm finally going to do it. My junior spring, but at Amherst, all of our language classes start in the fall and maybe the second half in the spring. But thankfully at UMass Amherst, they have a non-intensive Mandarin class that starts in the spring. So because of the five college consortium, I was able to not have to wait to take that language and I was able to do it at UMass. But Soleil, I wonder if you also have thoughts on why you've decided to take classes at other colleges and would like to share with the group. 
Yeah, I actually found myself in a similar situation where I wanted to take a art class, another studio art class um, in the spring of my sophomore year, but at Amherst, um, section ones are in the fall and section two is in the spring and I want to take painting, which I hadn't taken at that point. So I found myself signing up for a UMass class for um, their painting one, which was just amazing. It was also very um, interesting because I was just used to a bit of smaller classes based on the classes I did take in the art department. Um, I am not an art major by any means, as I said before, but I have taken a few um, classes in the department. So it's kind of nice to see that um, difference. And the as CC has said, it is number one, the country for their dining hall. And I fell in love with it. It worked out for my schedule to eat there um, just because of my classes before and after. And it was it was amazing. I can't talk enough about their food, which isn't to say Amherst has bad food. It's just it, UMass is number one in the country. Um, but I will pass it on to Cece. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about my experience um, taking a class at UMass. So I haven't taken, I haven't gotten the chance to take a class at Smith or Mount Holyoke um, or Hampshire just yet. Um, but I have taken a class at UMass and that was actually because of a scheduling conflict. Um, I originally really wanted to take um, Psych 101. Um, I know we have some people interested interested in that here, um, and I didn't decide I wanted to take Psych 101 until like the the, the week before I got to got back to school my sophomore year, and I was like, oh, I should do this. Um, so then, but when I tried to enroll at Amherst, there were too many people interested, and they were all pre-registered, so I couldn't get anyone, you know, to like drop the class because you know that's mean and. Um, so I emailed a professor at um, UMass and I asked him, hey, do you have spot, a spot in your lecture for me? Um, and then thankfully, it, all the timing worked out and I um, ended up getting in. So that's what I took my sophomore fall. Coincidentally, one of my closest friends from high school also was taking that class at the same time, completely unplanned. Um, but I got there and I, my, my, my class was actually really late in the evening. So I got to eat dinner at UMass as well, um, which was amazing um like so good <laughs> um yeah but in general just like the experience definitely as like um Lauren and Saleh both said is really really d different than an that than an Amherst like a typical class size at Amherst around 25 students maybe some classes are way smaller especially as you get um older um like I know one of my like 400 level classes only has like nine people in it um but at UMass, my, my, my psychology class was over 500 people, so it was definitely a huge contrast. Um, and I definitely got a wider perspective of like where I was in the, in the um, that college consortium. Like, because Amherst is a small school, it's, so, it's very natural that you can feel like you're trapped in a bubble sometimes. And, you know, like we only have 1,800 people. So if you ever get sick of seeing some people's faces, you can just, you know, walk on over to UMass and you don't know anyone. Um, and that was kind of my experience where in my sophomore fall, I just kind of wanted to, you know, get away from um, central campus and try to, try to get like a more like, I guess, unique and like wider experience um, of, Amherst and I think UMass was just like perfect for that. I'm also getting a few questions in my messages so I will pose it to you all. If either of you have experience about how easy or difficult it is to manage taking classes across the five colleges, how accessible are professors at other colleges with Amherst college students or how does taking classes at other colleges benefit you in like interdisciplinary ways or just generally, if either of you have any thoughts on that. And again, if folks have questions about the Five College Consortium or about our other experiences, feel free to write it in the chat and hopefully we can get that answered for you. Um, I just wanted to say that, um, I mean, I did take a class at UMass, which is one of the closest, um, closer colleges, but for me, it was literally a 10 minute bus ride and I was left right in front of the um, art department and the professor was very easy to talk to. So um, for the class I took, there were some 
prerequisites to it, it, which I did take at Amherst, but didn't necessarily need it transferred to UMass. So I just kind of chatted the professor and say, hey, I took this and that class. Is that okay? Um, and even when I started the class, I didn't necessarily have access to the um, drive that all the students had because of their um, emails. My email for UMass kind of got made a little bit later, but because of their emails that were associated with the college. So the professor was just really good at working with me to make sure I settled in right and got all the information I needed. Not to mention that was also when we all had to leave campus um, early because of COVID. And I would just say my experience was worked really, really well with that. And I found my professor at UMass was just understand it and try to make it as easy for um, everyone in the class. I hope that answers a bit. I can say a little bit about the interdisciplinary research um, and like accessibility with the facilities. Um, my current neighbor, um, she researched, she did research in a psychology slash neuro related um, lab at UMass her freshman summer. Um, this was actually an opportunity that she kind of created for herself. She reached out to the professor um, saying, hey, I'm a student at Amherst College. Um, I'm really interested in your research. Can I work with you? Um, or do you have space in the lab where I can shadow you or you know, see what you're doing or meet with you? Um, and that professor was you know, more than happy to let her into her lab. And she actually worked um, in that lab at UMass for the entire summer, her freshman year. So in that sense, yes, they're accessible. You just have to be active in pursuing those opportunities. And I think that says it, it's, it's, it's the same way in Amherst. Like people aren't going to, I don't think people are going to hold your hand and be like, oh, my, you know, my lab is open if you want a job. Like you're going to have to like, you know, take that initiative and be like, hey, like I'm interested in this. Can I have a job or whatever? Um, and that's how she ended up getting opportunities. That's how a lot of um, my other friends who have worked at UMass have gotten opportunities. Um, and I think there is a question in general about interdisciplinary programs. I'm not, I'm not an expert at this, um, but there are, and, and like Lauren, I know you're doing the certificate, um, so maybe you could speak more about that too. Um, but a lot of my friends are also pursuing like interdisciplinary certificates that kind of span the entire um, five colleges. And Lauren will talk a little bit about that, which might be more down the line of that issue. <laughs> Yes, I think that's a good segue. I also got a question about what are the benefits of going to a liberal arts college, and I will start by answering this with what makes Amherst distinct as a liberal arts college, and one of those things, like we've talked about, is the five college consortium. By being at Amherst, you have this network of other college students, other professors, other events, like a lot of times conferences or speakers or even concerts will be hosted at other colleges, and as Amherst students, you can go to those. Like if anyone is interested in reproductive justice, Loretta Ross was basically like the founder of reproductive justice. And she's a professor, a visiting professor at Smith College. So she's taking like doing classes and like doing talks. So if you're interested, a lot of professors at Amherst are really well known and recognized, but also professors at other colleges are doing amazing research. And then the other thing that makes Amherst distinct is our open curriculum. So I'm just going to talk about that briefly since it does speak to the Amherst education and the value of a liberal arts college. So the open curriculum at Amherst means that there are no distribution requirements or general education requirements that you have to take in order to graduate. The only classes you have to take are the ones for your major as well as a first year seminar, which is just a class that you take in your first semester with other first years or with the transfer cohort. And the really great thing about the open curriculum is you just have so much flexibility with your schedule because you can come into Amherst not knowing at all what you want to do. And then you have time in your first semester, your first year, your second year to figure that out. And also it really does allow you to just explore other things like as opposed to colleges where you have to take a math, two languages, like a history and English at Amherst, you can really take the classes you want to take. And while a lot of students do choose to double major in like areas where they're interested, a lot of students also branch out and you'll have like STEM students taking really niche like poetry classes or you'll have like humanities majors like myself going to UMass and taking a Chinese class, which I think is really great. And I don't know if either of you have other thoughts and I see there are other questions which we will get to. So I'm, I'm seeing them folks. 
Also, um, if you guys have questions, I don't know whether or not this is allowed in the chat privileges, but messaging like the big chat instead of Lauren directly might be helpful. So um, Soleil and I can see the questions as well. Um, but yeah, did you want, did you want to add anything, Soleil? I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, I feel like I meant to say this, and I know if I did or not, but um, the big curriculum is just also great. Like I was the I think I did say this. I was the only non-art major in my um, class at UMass, which everyone else kind of found like surprising. Um, and like the open curriculum is what like allowed me to find out I wanted to double major in sociology. I came in knowing I wanted to major in math um, until I just took a bunch of random classes. And I was like, oh, I keep taking sociology classes. I should um, make that my double major. Another quick comment on, again, the value of the five college consortium. At Amherst, we don't have any minors, so a lot of people do choose to double major or just have a single major, but the five college consortium has different certificate programs, which is kind of like graduating with a minor. So my certificate is in reproductive health rights and justice. There are other certificates in like Africana studies or like there's one in marine science or a ton of different ones that I don't know off the top of my head, but in order to graduate with the certificate, you just have to take a certain number of classes and like a certain type of classes and maybe do like a little side project. But if you are interested in something at Amherst and there isn't a major for it, or you just want more of an interdisciplinary approach about something, then you can do that at Amherst, which I think is really valuable. And there was another question about the accommodations at Amherst, which Thomas, judging from the UK, you mean like dorms and residence halls and living? Okay, perfect. So CC or Soleil, do either of you want to take that one on? Uh, yeah, I can I can use that because I have accommodations. So this works out very well. Um, so if you have um, like any like physical impediment that you housing, have like housing accommodations, sorry for not like like your dorm, your residence hall. So yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like like okay, okay. Yeah. Like like just what the dorm life is like. Oh oh gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so basically like do you mean like like how the housing process works basically is like my Yeah. Like what are dorms like? Where do people live? Do a lot of people live on campus? Are there like TVs and fridges and common rooms? Just gotcha. the general. So um over 97% of our students live on campus. Um, this is just because Amherst Town, like you can live off campus after your first year if you choose to do so, but not many students do just because it doesn't necessarily make financial sense. Apartments in Amherst can get a little expensive. Um, so most of our um, students do live on campus. As a first year, you'll be living in a, most likely a one room double. Um, so it's basically just one giant room with two um, so it's a furniture and you'll be sharing that with a roommate. Most of the time that will be random. Um, so you fill out a basic housing survey just talking about your living habits um, and the residential life office will pair you with someone that they think will complement that. Um, and um, yeah, but usually that roommate will have different academic or extracurricular interests than you. For example, my first year roommate was a six foot tall varsity basketball player. Um, interested in econ and poli sci. I, no offense to any econ fans, but I really am terrible at econ. That's like my least favorite subject. Um, but, and I'm also 5'2", and I can't play basketball to save my life. So, um, but we had a lot of a lot of other things in common, like we both played music, and um, we went to go support each other in all the games, and it was really lovely having her as my first year roommate. As you become an upperclassman, um, you have some variety in where you choose to live, so you can have, um, Two room doubles, which is basically two single rooms taped together by a door. You can have those in first year dorms as well, um, but in only in certain buildings. Um, you can also get a single, which is what I have currently, which is what all students currently have actually, um, because of the code regulations. Um, you could live in a suite style. Um, I lived in a four person suite my sophomore year with three of my best friends. Um, and you can live up to like 10 to 12 person suites if you want to live with like that many people like go off. Um, Otherwise, um, we also have um, communities called theme houses that are um, basically just like bubbles of communities that just like in either um, are focused around a language. So there are language houses like the French language house, German language house, Russian language house, 
Um, there's a Spanish language house as well that doubles as our Latinx culture house. Um, there are culture houses, perfect segue, um, like the um, Asian, Asian culture house and, um, and the black culture house. And um, yeah, so it's like, there's a lot of like different housing options available to Amherst College students. Um, I'm not sure if that answers all of your questions, but cool. <laughs> I think also just speaking on housing at Amherst, they all really depend based on where you're living. Like Cece was saying, as a first year, you usually have a roommate and the first year quad is one space on campus where all the first years are living in buildings right next to each other. So as a new student, it's really nice because when you're in the dining hall and you meet a new friend, you're walking in the same direction. Otherwise, for a lot of people, the buildings are really spread throughout campus and some are right next to like the dining hall, some are right next to town. And then in terms of the interiors, they're all really nice. We don't have sinks in our bedrooms like I did when I was studying in London, but all of the buildings are really nice. Like none of them are grungy and gross and they all just have like common spaces as well with like TVs and couches and like dining room tables and stuff, but some of the buildings used to be like academic buildings or the building I live in now used to be a fraternity. One of our biggest first year residence halls used to be a gym. So they all look really different inside, but the accommodations are nice. Most of the buildings have elevators and I think most people enjoy living on campus. I'm also getting a question about how strong the computer science department is at Amherst. Does anyone want to take that question on? I will say that it seems like no one knows for sure. I would say computer science is a relatively strong department. I'm only speaking from personal experience because one of my friends is a computer science major and he's really enjoyed it. And all of the computer science majors leave Amherst with a lot of job security, which I think is really nice. Yeah, um, I am not a computer science major, but I have taken a few classes within the um, department. So I was considering doing it for um, electives for my math major. And I would just like to say like, it's a it's definitely a small department, but it is a strong department with three um, great professors. And I've definitely seen a lot of people leave with job offers, which is just great. Because um, when you graduate, it could be a bit scary, um, but Amherst does well to help prepare you for that. Are there any more questions about the Five College Consortium or about Amherst in particular? We won't keep you all until 8.30, but if you do have more questions, we're happy to speak on our own experiences or help you see a little bit more what life at Amherst is like. I got a question from Jay that I accidentally, the, I sent the response to Lauren and I was trying to copy and paste it, but it wasn't working. So I'll just say it. Um, so yeah, so like there are a, as she asked um, specifically about uh, pre-med opportunities um, at Amherst and this may not be applicable towards everyone, but um, in case you are interested in um, the pre-med staff here, we don't have a pre-med major, but we do have like a pre-med like track, I guess is what I like to call it. Um, and we have a ton of faculty members that are there to support you. We have a um, pre-med advisor named um, Dean Aronson, uh, Richard Aronson. He used to be a pediatrician and then he, um, you know, as after he, um, you know, stopped being a doctor, he came and um, has been a advisor for pre-med students ever since. He's been here like forever. Um, he is really, really honest and he helps you like all along the process. Like I've talked to him since my fresh, freshman year at Amherst um, and he's been like, oh, like this is what I suggest you do over the summer or during your um, break. Maybe you should think about this or, oh, you're taking these classes. I suggest these classes. Like he's really, really there to support you. And it's not just him. It's a lot of other pre-med faculty within our career center as well. Um, and there are also a lot of other pr um, professor um, faculty, like, like for professors that are part of this pre-med community that help um, like guide us along that process. Um, and I think one of the bigger like questions that I was I was thinking when I was a prospective student was how to get those opportunities, especially for like jobs or summers, and this applies to everyone. Um, 
you know, if you're interested in an internship over the summer, um, there are always internship opportunities offered by not only Amherst College, but Amherst College affiliated companies um, and I guess agencies. Um, we use a program called Handshake. It's kind of a college student LinkedIn almost. Um, and a lot of job opportunities for Amherst College students are open through there. Um, in addition, we have a um, internship program called the Charles Hamilton Houston Internship Program um, that is a very streamlined, um, I guess, program where internships are kind of filtered. A lot of them actually by Amherst College alumni um, that kind of increases your chances of getting a job, which is really, really nice. And they have internships all the way from like tech to um, medicine to education or whatever. Um, there's a lot of opportunities that can be found there. And um, if you also apply to this program, you can also get compensated financially as well. Um, so there is, um, so there is that. And just really briefly about, sorry, to go back to the five colleges thing, I don't want to keep jumping back and forth, but um, I primarily go to the five colleges for social life, um, which sounds kind of bad now that it leaves my mouth, but um, I, I have a lot of friends that go to UMass, Smith, and Mount Holyoke, um, so I'll actually, you know, be able to um, go see them very frequently in a normal semester when we're allowed to leave campus and stuff, um, and yeah, like the, the entire campus is super, super welcoming um, and like it's just fun being there. Um, it's always a really like interesting time kind of like exploring what other college towns are like and how different it is from Amherst. Um, yeah, and just a clarifying question, um, Amherst is a undergraduate only institution, so we have no grad students here. I don't know if Lauren or Soleil, if you want to take other questions as well. I can talk quickly about the study abroad question. So about 50%, almost half of Amherst students study abroad at one point in their career. So it's something that's really emphasized. A lot of students take advantage of it. And we have an office called the Global Education Office where you go and they kind of help you chart your study abroad journey. And I will just say that everyone who works in that office is very, very nice. I decided to go abroad like two weeks before applications were due and I thought they were going to say it's too late like you messed up you just have to wait to go in another semester but they were really helpful helped me figure out like which programs I was applying for like what I needed to do to do it but Amherst College has a lot of different like pre-approved programs that students do some people choose to directly enroll at universities abroad like I did other students do more internship based programs other students study at like study abroad centers where they're taking classes with like the same people usually like in English but then learning the language of their country so there are a ton of different options Amherst College students go all over the place I went to London my neighbor through this wall went to Spain some of my teammates have gone to like Denmark and South Africa and New Zealand and Argentina so no matter what you're interested in studying there are a lot of options for it abroad. And another great thing about the five college, not about the five college consortium, another great thing about the open curriculum is there's flexibility when you go abroad. So there's not a ton of pressure to get certain requirements out of the way and then maybe you can go abroad. But a lot of students end up going abroad and then not taking any classes for their major at all, which I think is really nice. And I'm seeing other questions about like what was surprising about Amherst or what you wish could be changed. So Soleil, do you have any thoughts on either of those points? I'm so sorry. I was responding to a follow-up question um, about computer science in the chat and I kind of, my mind went straight to there. So do you mind um, repeating what the question was proposed? Yeah. What was surprising to you about coming to Amherst or what is one aspect of Amherst that you wish could be changed? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, so I meant to mention this, but I didn't, but um, I'm from New York City. So Amherst is a very different um, environment versus like city life. So I guess I was really excited um, to be in the birds and then over time, I kind of like got tired of um, the smallness of it. And that's also what led me to want to explore um, classes at UMass. And like, I tend to go to Smith a lot because I have friends at Smith. Um, 
but I wouldn't change that necessarily just because I do love the tight knit community. I love how small my classes can be. I've had a class, including myself, that was um, only like five students and to like high school Soleil, that would have been scary, but like at Amherst, it was just really great. Um, but I think um, a few of the changes I originally had for Amherst was already in the process of being changed or there's movement in that, such as like the education department or like um, just the school's commitment to being like anti-racist. Um, which I think like all schools should make, but I would have to think about that one a little bit. One thing that surprised me about coming to Amherst, and maybe it was just coming to college in general, but is how busy you will be. Like when I was a first year in the first few weeks, I took three naps a day, one after lunch, one right before my practice and one right after practice. And apparently that is a lot of naps for one person to be taking. So I feel like coming to a new place, like when you're juggling new classes, new people, like so many extracurricular options, so many social options, it can be overwhelming. So coming to Amherst, I was surprised by the busyness. And just quickly speaking on Soleil's point of like, sometimes how Amherst can feel small, study abroad is a great opportunity if you do want to get away from Amherst, maybe you want to live in a big city or live in a super rural place. It's a great time to challenge yourself and get away from Amherst and really have the opportunity to explore. So I, I'm just plugging wherever you go to college, if you can, make sure you study abroad. I also just wanted to, um, I agree that my plans have kind of been kicked off because of COVID. But um, also Amherst forced me to get my driver's license, which is like so great because like now I drive. Um, but I think that's like something that Amherst being in like a smaller town did for me because I would not have done it otherwise. Um, I think like just to add on, um, yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely agree with Lauren's point um, with how busy I, like, I know this might be for a lot of you, like, taking, like, seven to eight classes a day during high school. You wake up at, like, 7.30, or my school started at 7.30, um, and then you went straight from 7.30 to, like, 2.30 or 3 p.m., like, no break, like, it was, like, half an hour for lunch, but, like, you know, coming to college, I knew that I was only going to take maybe four classes. Um, oh, like, I was like, oh, like, I have so much time, like, to do, like, whatever. Um, and, like, I think my first semester, I totally just, un like, un underestimate or I overestimated how much I could do. Um, so, like, being able to cut back on the things that I wanted to do, um, being able to, like, you know, have pockets of day um, in the middle of my day um, to, like, you know, do work or take a rest or do whatever. I think that was, like, a weird transition period for me. Um, for something that I would change about Amherst, I think, um, or that Amherst could improve upon, I think it has to do with our dining hall, just having more, um, I guess, a wider variety of like allergen-friendly, vegan, and vegetarian meals. Um, I think they've been working really hard and like I gen like, genuinely, like from my freshman year to my junior year, like the quality in food and like the diversity of food that they are making has completely changed. Um, and I'm very thankful for that, but I still think there could be a lot more, you know, effort made in like the vegan, vegetarian, um, you know, um, allergen friendly areas. Um, I'm not any of those things, but sometimes I like to go to those sections because it's like it makes me feel healthy and um, like, you know, vegetables are always good for you. Um, but yeah, having a little bit more improvement would be mine. Um, yeah, I don't. And I, th I see a question about transferring credits from outside the five colleges. So th are these college credits um, like that are that you've taken like in high school or, or like taking a class in a different college institution while you're in college? Because I think it's slightly different and I don't want to put anyone on the spot there, but.
If not, um, or like if, if it's just like a big question mark, I also have credits from um, Boston University that I took like when I was a, in high school, um, but I wasn't able to transfer mine, unfortunately. Um, and I don't know if Amherst takes credits from other schools, um, just because our, um, that's just like system stuff and um, something that I don't think rolls over necessarily. I know that we don't take AP credits for, um, AP classes or AP tests, if you get a four or five, you can place out of things, but you can't get college credits for them at the school. So I'm assuming that university credits work in a similar way. So we've been, it's almost 8.15 on East Coast time where Amherst College is located. So are there any last questions that we can answer for you all about the five college consortium, which hopefully you've learned a lot about at this point, or about anything else at Amherst. Feel free to drop it in the chat or come off mute. Yes, we will all share, or I will share my email and my name in the chat, and I invite everyone else, the other tour guides, to as well. Okay, well, I think the tour guides will stick around for like two more minutes if anyone just wants to ask a question in a less high pressure environment. But thank you all so much for coming to the session. Hopefully you learned a lot about Amherst and the Five College Consortium. And again, with the pandemic, it's throwing a lot of plans out of whack and making the whole world crazy. So I imagine that trying to find a college in this time is very very difficult but thank you for coming to this session there are also like virtual tours and virtual info sessions about amherst so if you're able sign up for those and feel free to reach out to us if you do have any more questions about anything but feel free to head off the zoom get some rest for people in different time zones and have a great rest of your weeks Do either of you have questions or are you having trouble leaving the Zoom? Or if you don't have a question, you just us say something that's cool for them. Yeah, if you're, you're having trouble leaving Zoom, I can't speak English right now. That's also okay. They might be away from their laptops. Mm -hmm. Well. I think this was a good session. Yeah. Thanks, you all. I learned a lot about your experiences at Amherst. Okay. I will, I'll end the Zoom. Also, how much time do we put on our time sheet? That is this? I just did 7.20 to 8.30. Okay. Yeah. Also, sorry, I joined a little bit later. I was with my grandma, the animals. Right. A okay. I was also not 50 minutes early. I mean, I, I was. I got there like maybe a second before you. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was like, Ooh. also sorry for the confusion about the accommodation. In in the UK, they call it, like housing accommodations. So it's like, oh, what's the account like the dorm you live in? If I had not studied abroad in London, I would not have known that. Go but on. he messaged me. I was like, what are the accommodations like? Yeah. Okay. So thanks for that. Well, have a good rest of your Tuesdays. Bye. I'm going to end the meeting.